Smart Cities is a UN globalist initiative using climate change as the reason for implementing their totalitarian control. No smart cities! 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 When you say smart cities, we say no! You say smart cities, we say no! No smart cities! No smart cities! No smart cities! No smart cities! The smart cities agenda that will not only affect this suburb, but every single suburb around the country. Your state governments and your local governments are lying to you. You know you cannot trust the Andrews government. It is a globalist agenda to restrict your movements, to keep you within your 15 minute zone. This will affect every one of these shop owners, every one of you business operators. People from other communities will not be able to visit the city of Berwick unless you live within 15 minutes. This will great, greatly affect your businesses. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Walking, looking, uh, being at the front of the line and looking back down the main street, it was, it was a, uh, a good spectacle. It was a great message sent, so God bless all of you for turning up today. So give yourself a clap for that. Yay! When people are up here speaking, the information that we're relaying on is for you guys and to relay out in the community yourselves. Okay, so um, without further ado, we all know the impact that Darren's having in the community, um, like all of you. And we're all standing up. Uh, isn't it beautiful that you're all standing up and becoming people that you've never been before? That means doing things you've never done before. Remember that. Oh, I've never done that. Okay, fantastic. Get excited about it. And if you fall down and it doesn't work, that's okay. Sometimes it's not going to. Just keep pushing forward, as you all have been for the last three years. Okay, so I'll hand over to Darren now. Big round of applause for Darren Bergworth, guys. Thank you, Craig, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the police for their efforts today uh, in supporting your community and closing down the roads. Thank you. Because uh, we're here on your behalf as well, guys, um, and I'm sure you're all uh, starting to realise that there's been some uh, some bad shit go down over the last three years, and uh, the education um, that we're all getting uh, across the board, because we're we're all stooged, um, and it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from or who you work for, uh, you've all been involved in uh, in something that's going to go down in history as uh, the most significant, disgusting act by governments. Uh, ever, okay, um, breaking all kinds of laws. So uh, that's all gonna keep coming out. And what our job is, guys, here um, as a community is to get these facts and the education out to the broader community. And that's why these local events are so important. And it's uh, very important that we all come together, all the different groups, uh, and we amalgamate and make these efforts um, actually bigger and better every time we have one. And uh, we're gonna be organising another one shortly. Uh, I've got some ideas. Uh, for uh, a bigger and better one that's going to bring even more groups together. Uh, so, yeah, look, good on you for coming out here. Uh, would have liked to have seen a few more numbers. Uh, we've got some guys here from the uh, Save Bill, uh, Beaconsfield Reservoir. Uh, so I don't know uh, how many local uh, community members we've got here, but they're trying to shut the, uh, the park down up or the reservoir up there. Uh, this is a, uh, a community asset uh, that they're trying to uh, keep us out of. So there's a big push. Uh, I encourage everybody to get behind their cause. Uh, I certainly all my place um, communities around this area are going to get behind the Save Beaconsfield Reserve uh, or Reservoir and, um, and we've just got to keep coming together on every issue. So it doesn't matter, the problem we've always had over the years is uh, we don't give a shit if it doesn't affect us. Right? If someone over there is getting bashed, we just turn a blind eye and oh, it doesn't affect me, it's not, it's not happening to me so it doesn't matter. Right? And that's what this movement is all about. 
we can't turn a blind eye to the fraud and corruption that's going on that's uh, rife throughout our uh, our governments uh, and and all the bureaucracies in this country right we've got to stick up for the little guy every single time and that's why we're getting behind the uh, save the beaconsfield reservoir um, movement uh, and any uh, issue that uh, local communities are having uh, whether it be from their council or uh, or they're being treated unfairly we've got to stand up for them and not let them just wither on the vine because that is the issue that we have that we don't care about our fellow community members right and uh, what has shown us over the last few years is that um, when we do uh, we can have a, a really really positive impact uh, I'm not sure uh, how many of you are aware or have seen um, the serving of a, uh, a writ against the Yarra Rangers uh, Council yesterday. So, um, I mean, that's a really big deal, guys. Um, that's an injunction um, put against the uh, the council to stop rolling out the United Nations agenda with the uh, these 15-minute cities. Um, so that that's significant, and we're going to be following that and doing updates uh, every time we get some more news uh, in regards to how that's travelling. But they've uh, applied for an injunction for 12 months to stop the council moving ahead. Uh, so that would be putting in any infrastructure uh, for smart cities or 15-minute cities. Um, and uh, I don't know if you've anyone seen the footage uh, that Ian handed over on um, on uh, Friday, but the guy who, who received it was uh, shaking like a leaf. And, uh, and we're seeing this in the courts too now, where, where the, uh, these lawyers and solicitors are starting to tremble because they know that we know. And they know they've been doing the wrong thing. And uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's the amount of people that are actually pushing back now against this system um, and the corruption, um, they haven't got a leg to stand on. So it doesn't matter what results we get or how we get treated, we press on continuously, relentlessly. Right, more and more of these and we need to grow more numbers every time we have one of these events. We need these in the thousands. And community events, not in Melbourne, but Forest of the Fallen that the girls do, uh, Amber and Donna do an amazing job. We did one last week. Um, yeah. Um, we were down at Lillardale Lake last Sunday um, and it was an amazing spectacle and we having massive interaction with the, the general uh, public. And these people are reading, I had 10 conversations with 10 different groups or people um, and gave them a fairly deep um, synopsis of what's actually been going on and what their plan is. And they were listening and believing everything that I was telling them. So these people are ready to listen to us. Um, they're seeing the writing on the wall and we've just got to keep not worrying about what we get called um, and, and just be relentless in this message and, uh, and the awakening. And it's, uh, it's a grassroots thing, it's local communities, it's at your local market. We've got to start setting up uh, marquees. Uh, at the local market. I know my place are doing that. I know A1 are also doing that. And we're going to have um, a lot more of these combined events um, and support each other at a grassroots level, um, the, the, regardless of what's happening um, uh, in the background with some other things. But we, the people, um, whatever walk of life we are involved in or whatever community group we're involved in, need to bring it all together um, as, uh, as big numbers. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that and I'll hand back to Craig. But uh, thanks, guys, for coming out here today. Cheers. Thanks very much, Darren. And uh, I just want to reiterate uh, one of the things he said is uh, what's massively important from right now moving forward is we come together as one collective, not a group of. Now, it's great to have the individual groups. You know, whatever group you're aligned with, good on you for getting out there and uh, putting yourself out there and making a difference. But it's time to put our petty squabbles, our petty indifferences to the side for the one greater good. Now, I know you guys know this, but that's the message we've got to be delivering as well too, okay? Because it's only one collective push that's going to give us the chance to prevail. And we are making a difference. As I've said at the last rally, and as I keep saying to everyone I speak to, look for the little wins. Stop looking for the big payoff. The big payoff will come when we keep having those little wins all over the place. And we are having those little wins, okay? So every time 
you get kicked out of a local council meeting, that's a win because it gives us ammunition, as evident with the, uh, the writ that's been lodged with the Yarra Rangers Council. Now, that's a massive win as well too. So keep on pushing what you're doing. Now, as you know, I'm going to state a few things. The 20 Minute Neighbourhoods is a smart cities, 20 minute neighbourhoods, 15 minute neighbourhoods, it's all the same, as we know. And it's a global, global blueprint to be implemented worldwide. If you have a look at the UN Sustainable Development page, which comes under the excuse of climate change and zero emissions as a vehicle to drive this smart cities agenda, as we know, it's a load of garbage. And if you have a look at the Victorian 20 minute website, it's remarkably similar to the UN website. Now why are our state governments and local councils implementing a UN agenda? We know why. But that's the question you've got to keep asking the people out there. And people out in the community are receptive. They're ready because they know things aren't right. You can feel it, can't you? For those of us that are spiritually minded, you can feel that energy starting to shift. Okay? Now, if you go and have a look, and we've got them worried. You want an example? No problem. On the Plan Melbourne website, planmelbourne.vic.gov.au, if you have a look at the current project section, click on the 20 minute neighbourhoods. In the overview, the first paragraph states, in response to some theories, 20 minute neighbourhood is not about putting restrictions on travel at all. So the government are lying to you. And we know the Andrews government can't be trusted, but they put that on their website. So they're clearly worried. Now that's another small win. Now like I stated, why are the state government and local councils pushing a UN initiative? This has been planned a long way out. Matthew Guy, that little <coughs> Freemason lackey boy. Now when he was the planning minister, for the Liberal government in October 2012 released a tr strategic blueprint for the Melbourne 20 minute cities way back then way back then this has been a plan for a long time something they haven't cooked up just recently now also you want further validation no problem okay if you go on to the C40 website c40.org now the C40 is a consortium of municipalities that have all signed up to the 15 minute cities and you'll see on the website Melbourne's one of them. On this website it clearly states their goal and their agenda under smart cities under the guise of reducing the carbon blueprint and zero emissions and all that poppycock. They clearly state their goal, now you'll love this one, is to reduce calorie consumption to 2,500 calories a day by force too okay by force you start telling that to the people out in the community oh that's a conspiracy no worries point them to the website okay c40.org you'll see it for yourself and read for yourself and read 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 and read because knowledge is power and the more you read, the more you're going to inform yourself on what the real agenda is. And believe me, when you start reading, you want to keep more. It's three o'clock in the morning, and shit, I'm still reading. Okay? But keep at it. So that's one of them. Okay? Another one is that you cannot fly. This is no conspiracy. On their website, you cannot fly more than one time every three years. There you go. And I'll guarantee you'll have to get a permit for that. Also, they want to reduce, pro not, only emit, not only have electric vehicles, which they want to completely have by 2030 and, and, and beyond, they want to reduce private car ownership by 90%. It clearly states that on the website. Tell that to your local community. Oh, that's right, you can walk everywhere because it's 15 minutes and you'll all have everything you need within 15 minutes. They want to switch completely to electric cars as well too, like I said, and limit the amount of travel. As you know, 
you want to travel outside your 15 minute area, you'll need a permit to do so. Now, as we know, it's a globalist agenda. If you have a look, and it's all tied into the smart cities, sorry, all tied into the climate change. If you have a look at, there's a document put out by the UK government. Uh, it's their climate commitment to climate change. It's called Absolute Zero. Now this is once again, you can print this document and download it yourself and show it to your friends. Now, I'm just going to uh, <laughs> note some interesting points from this document. Between 2020 and 29, that's now, the development of petrol and diesel vehicles ends. All vehicles from 2030 to 2049, all new vehicles will be electric. Now as we know, the grid won't be able to handle that. Okay, but that's another thing you put to your friends. You have to sell your car in about six years, mate. Because if they're going to get rid of all the petrol and diesel engines, you can guarantee if you've still got one, the price of fuel will be about five bucks a litre. That's what they'll do. Um, here's one, and they've already started implementing this in France. Flying. Now we are we off one different website, the C40. Here's another document from a government organisation. Flying between 2020 and 2029, only select, now this is in the UK, but you can guarantee they'll implement it all around the world. As we know, it's a global blueprint. Only select airports were open in the UK. Heathrow, Glasgow and Belfast only open. Travel only by rail. 2030 to 2049, all airports closed. Now, if you say that's garbage, well, it's on their document. And also France, and you can do an internet search yourself. France have formally banned domestic flights that can be covered by train by two and a half hours. They've already done it. Okay? So you want proof? No worries. There's, there's part of your proof. That, you know, so that's something else to tell your friends. Oh, here we go. Appliances. 2020 to 2029. That's now. Gas phased out, we know this. We know this already, you know, new commercial developments and new housing developments are being designed by architects without gas fittings. If you're in the industry, you'll know that. Okay, so once again, we've got to keep pushing back about that. Um, fridges, freezers, washing machines will all become smaller. So bad luck if you've got about three or four kids, you have to do about four loads a day. Um, and from 2030 to 2049, Electrification of all appliances and reduction of the size to cut a power requirement. So there'll be no gas at all. All electric. Are you happy about that? No. So when you're having your bad days, which we all do, hands up if you have your bad days and think, oh, what are we doing this all for? Yeah, it's, it's, don't worry, it's, it's okay. It's part of the process. It's part of the process. And, and you know, just a side note, they're getting really, really panicky because they're throwing everything they can at us everything if you've noticed okay now we're not going to cop this we'll keep pushing back but the more pressure we're applying is making them nervous and they're starting to throw more things at us so what we're doing is working yep. now as of august 20 sorry out of august, as of august the 20th some of you may or may not know the westpac bank are going to, uh, from August the 20th this year, limit your cash withdrawals to $1,000 a day. Now, you can guarantee all the other banks will follow suit soon, soon after. Okay, so we need to let the community know about that as well too. $1,000 a day, you know what that's about, don't you? Okay, with a push to this all this uh, digital currency and phasing out cash. Uh, oh, here we go, back to the uh, UK document. Food. From 2020 to 2029, I've already said a noise about this, the national consumption of beef and lamb to be reduced by 50%. From 2030 onwards, beef and lamb will be phased out. Apparently we'll be eating crickets. Yeah, that's what I have in mind. Now, stay with me on this because this backs up information I've already given you. Carlos Marino, you may or may know that, not that name. He was the initial driver be behind implementing these smart cities. He's a globalist from France. 
In 2015 at the COP21, that's the Paris Agreement under the United Nations Framework Convention, that's when he started the real push. Now, you want further proof about restricting private car ownership? No problem. On the MDPI website, that's a site for scientific journals, and I'm happy to send you guys the links, no problem, in okay, case so you can back it up. There's a report on a 15-minute cities written by Carlos Marino, along with, now here's where the connections all start. Isn't it funny, once you research and you start connecting all the dots, how exciting does it get? It's great, isn't it? Um, one of the other authors of this document is a Dr. Da Zahir Alam. Now, good old Dr. Alam, he's from Geelong Deakin University, and he's an urban regeneration and sustainable futures expert, apparently. So it all ties in. We've got one here in our backyard. Um, now, this document was published in January 2021. And in the intro section, if you go down to the third paragraph, I'm just going to read this. Today, our car-dependent urban planning legacy outlines deep-rooted inadequacies, especially in the social and economic, and has become the centre of for unsustainable practices driving your car. Okay. However, in some major cities, there are... Now, this is off the website, and I'm quoting this word for word. There are some efforts to revamp and encourage public transport mechanisms, such as the use of public transport, Here's the kicker, with the objective of reducing private car ownership. Two separate websites telling you the same thing. Show your friends that. Want some further proof? No worries. Look what's happening in Oxford. Look at what's happening in Leeds. With all the surveillance cameras everywhere, roads being um, converted into bike lanes only. Oh, we've got plans and want to have a talk about uh, blocking off some main roads in the city. That's how they slowly do this, by stealth. And just to finish up, a couple more things. Ah, <laughs> as we know, local councils. The local council here, the city of Casey has been under administration for what, five or six years now, is it? You didn't even vote for these bureaucrats to be making decisions. Keep going to your local council meetings. Now, I understand the local city of Casey holds their meetings at four o'clock on a Tuesday. How convenient when everyone's still at work or looking after their kids or picking them up from school. That's deliberately designed. There's a small group of people that go. This is your neighbourhood. Now, a lot of people have, have travelled far and wide today and God bless you and thank you very much for coming down. But if you can get to your local council, city of Casey, especially the ones that are under administration, and keep putting them under pressure, keep asking the questions. You know the standard fob-off responses you're going to get back. It's not about the response. It's about putting pressure. Because these people have never been under this pressure in their life, and they're starting to crack. And that's because of the work you're doing. Keep it up. Keep pushing. Uh, oh, what's further, I'll uh, give you further incentive to attend your local council meetings and uh, put as much pressure on. I have it on very, very good authority that the uh, Andrews government, out of the uh, Premier's office themselves, they gave a directive to the local uh, council minister, the minister for local council, that's probably why you got the response you got back, Daz, to shut down all noise around local councils. Andrews wants this. So what do you think we're going to do? Make noise. Make noise, exactly. Keep going, keep pushing. Yeah, make some more. Obviously, in peace, don't give them an opportunity, no threats, but stern, look them in the eye and point a finger in their chest, metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, so keep, look, look, just to wrap up, guys, keep pushing. Yeah, no worries, Stas. Keep pushing. Keep putting more pressure on your local councils. Keep standing up. You know the exciting part about this? You guys haven't even reached your prime yet. You haven't even reached 50% of it yet. What we've done the last three years has been a warm-up. Are you warmed up now? Yes. Yeah? You ready to keep pushing? Yes. Bloody oath. Okay, because don't forget, they'll sing songs about us. 
in years to come because we were the ones that put our heads out we were the ones that set ourselves up from ridicule and we don't give a stuff we'll keep doing it okay but more and more people are starting to become more receptive to your conversations now aren't they yeah that's a win that's the wins i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen and the 5G push back as much as what you can okay keep pushing back against the uh attack on our children as well too with the lgbt drag queen story times with children not acceptable yeah. now i know this is a side issue from the smart cities and it is a distraction you know the push on this at the moment's no coincidence they're deliberately pushing that now to take people's focus off the smart cities and the voice that's another thing we're going to be raising awareness with the community with the voice the voice is needed to be implemented if it's not the whole thing falls down for them they can't implement the smart cities agenda without pushing the voice through please be crystal clear on that god bless you all much love to all of you keep doing what you come back here for this existence to do it is our duty it is our obligation and it's starting to become a little bit easier but we've got to keep pushing you have to make sacrifices you have to keep doing things you've never done before i know you've all got it in you look at you here today god bless you all i'll hand over to darren to uh, wrap up but uh thanks very much for coming guys keep doing what you're doing yeah, thanks, Craig. Um, and, and just to touch on that as well with the councils, uh, what we're doing, and, and people think, oh, we're not getting anywhere, they don't listen to us. Um, that's, that's garbage. That doesn't matter. Because what we're doing, we're pushing them into a corner where they're basically outing who they are. Right? They're shutting down democracy in this country. And we've got to use that and, and show the people exactly what our councils and our governments are about. Right, so we're exposing them for who they are by going there and putting pressure on them and then shutting us out of council meetings and not listening to our voice, not listening to the people, shows the rest of the community there is no democracy left in this country. So it is a massive impact. You may not think we're getting anywhere, but that alone uh, is a massive win for us because we are pushing them into a place where it doesn't matter what they do, they lose. Okay, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Now, just on, and, and every issue, every issue is important. Um, obviously, the digital ID uh, and, and the, um, the, uh, the currency issue and getting rid of cash is their main objective. And, and a lot of these other sideshows, like Craig said, are just that. But they're still relevant, okay, because we're getting more people. The, uh, the drag time story time to, uh, to kids uh, is bringing a whole new, different um, activist group into, into the mix. All right, we've got a lot of concerned parents now that are seeing the power in the people when we stand up and stand up for our rights, they're getting the inspiration and the strength and the courage to do the same. So we are leading by example by doing what we're doing. We are encouraging and inspiring other people to do similar things on whatever event affects them. And just on the, uh, the local councils and the, uh, the rollout of the uh, United Nations agendas and that kind of thing and uh, this, uh, this writ and the uh, injunction, uh, that Yarra Rangers uh, Council have been served. Uh, local council and local governments and state governments have absolutely no jurisdiction, right, to deal or do business with an international corporation or an international um, organisation. So they are way out of their pay grade in doing these deals like uh, Dandrews has done with the, uh, the CCP. Um, so we need to expose that. We can't accept them to just break their own rules and their own laws willy-nilly without some kind of retribution or some pushback by the people. So they're breaking laws all the time. They did it through the lockdowns, they did it through um, the forced vaccinations and all the stuff that we've lived through. They're still doing it and they're doing it in your face and they're laughing at us, right? That we need to grow these numbers. So, um, and, and also it gets back to the biggest issue why we're here today and what's happened to this country comes back to the T word in 1973, treason. And it was exactly that. Gough Whitlam, that dirty pig that sold this country out. Okay, and then uh, good old Rub Hulls did it in Victoria in, in, uh, in 2000 when he removed the oath of allegiance just after we'd voted 
uh, in a referendum to stay as a constitutional monarchy. There's two instances of treason right there. None of the laws and bylaws um, since 1960 have any lawfulness under our 1901 Australian Constitution Act, right, as proclaimed and gazetted. So we've got to own that. We've got to educate ourselves on that and stand in that strength and knowledge that everything they are doing is unlawful, right? And when you know that and when you believe that and you live it, then we, we're going to take this country back. So uh, make sure that we, uh, we educate ourselves on those things and, uh, and spread that message because this is a big, big issue and, and it all comes back to that 73 treason. Thank you. Good day today. Don't, uh, don't be, the numbers are good. Yeah, sure, we didn't get as many as Monvol, but it doesn't matter, like I said. The, the spectacle that we created, when I look back down the street of that main street, was fantastic. And you've seen the people on the sides there, and God bless all of you for handing out the flyers, and they're stopping, and they're starting to take, excuse me, <coughs> they're stopping and they're starting to take on board what you're saying. They're receptive. Because most people out there know something's not right. Just keep doing what you're doing. I know, I know I tend to repeat myself, but just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, especially in those, those dark days that you have. That's all right. It won't last. It's the next day. What can I do tomorrow? Who can I speak to tomorrow? Focus on the three or four people that are receptive to your conversations during the day. Don't focus on the 20 people that told you to get stuffed. Okay? They'll wake up when they're ready. Just keep chipping away, chipping away, 